So today we're going to be talking about structure, not in the traditional way that you, you think about it, but we're actually going to study um, the history of uh, traditional to contemporary building. The given topic of structure, um, I will slightly deviate from it and really talk about structure in terms of more, or more in terms of a metaphor of how our cultures and our histories, Africa and particularly here in Ghana, is linked to the West, particularly America. It's important to, to see how Ghana is developing like, like, like everywhere else into a contemporary society. I think, as with, as with most parts of the world, we are losing touch of who we are. And I think, to me, the mud hut is not a literal interpretation of you know, the round circular buildings that you see uh, on TV or in documentaries, but rather going back to, to a way that we ought to live optimizing our lives through harnessing um, uh, our, our, our resources properly and not waste it. This is me in northern Ghana. This is a typical mud hut. And um, I think it's, it's a great metaphor of how I think we ought to live. Africa is developing in a very similar way as in America. Uh, most developers are copying you know, these plant communities that you see everywhere, you know, from, from California to Calgary. And some of them are not the best. So we hope that we can, uh, as, as you get older, some of you will become architects and come up with better solutions for Africa and even for your own environment. So let's not charter. I think it'd be really interesting um, if you were to tell um, Mr. Addo what you're planning to do with this challenge. Our plan was to go in Ecuador. Um, 18 students went there recently. Do some development projects and some environmental and sustainable development projects in the country. And we felt that that was an area of higher need where we could do a lot more. And then I had a question. Uh, you mentioned using bamboo as a building material and that it was very common in Ghana. It's also a very common material in Ecuador. And I was wondering um, in what ways you used the bamboo in your structure. Uh, I'm sure in um, Ecuador, if you go to any typical village, you'll have a bamboo kind of reinforcement Right, like a bamboo mesh, and then the adobe kind of wraps around it. So that's how I would encourage you to explore what you're doing um, 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 in Ecuador. It's also excellent for roof framing bamboo. It's a great material, and um, I, would, I would encourage you to also think about just understanding the, your uh, context. Let the people of the village tell you how they build, and then what you can do is kind of contemporize it a little bit, you know, introduce better um, um, systems of, um, of connections or, you know, screwing things together and so forth. So I would encourage you, just watch and listen. There's a lot to be learned from the local context. I think that we need to go back to um, in, uh, interacting ac um, across race, across class, and across communities. And I think that um, it's wonderful to see such a wonderful mix in one classroom, but this mix should extend outside of the classroom in the way we approach making of our physical environment and also of our spiritual environment also. I was wondering how you would integrate community into the structures you build. Because you talk, um, we talked about the importance of community and what our communities are like, but how do you reflect that in the buildings? Thank you. How do I reflect the culture into the the uh, buildings? Well, that's a very <laughs> that's <laughs> that is the uh, Achilles heel of of most African architecture, right? There. How do we imbue culture into it? What I would say is, culture um, is not one strand, and therefore the way I approach this is, what are Ghanaians like, and how are they shaped by the environment and of climate? And how do they live? And so how do you create an architecture which talks about uh, community living, bringing people together through in, a, in a central kind of courtyard space? How do you get them cool passively? And, uh, and so forth. So it's about how we live. Now, you can imagine how we live. It's quite contrived these days because we are African, but we all have aspirations to be like, like people in the West. And most Africans, I must say, would love to have a building from from Calgary transplanted directly into Ghana, and they will see nothing wrong with it. So people like me are working against the grain to convince people to go back to 
you know, the courtyard way of living, having outdoor spaces. So when you're designing the structures, how much does change play in your actual design? Do you allow for the structures to be flexible? Yes, I think I, I believe in an, uh, an architecture which is not imposed, but rather it's some kind of a, it comes out of an organic growth over time. I think buildings look better over time, or they must look better over time. But it's not only about the edifice, the building. I want you guys to think about the role of landscape. Because to me, the true tropical architecture is the interstitial arched spaces, the spaces between the edifices. It's about landscape. And you can imagine that as a building gets older, the trees get bigger, and the play of light and wind and so forth in the building um, uh, kind of changes. And that's what makes a great architecture, I think. So um, for me, I don't really focus too much on the buildings per se, but rather what goes around the buildings, because I want people to actually experience the outdoors more than the indoors. That's great. Buildings can be, the building should be adaptable and added on to over time in a very organic manner. But this is how old cultures kind of grew, you know, their communities. They added on to it.